Hello guys, welcome back to the third part of the collection framework. Now in this, we'll talk about uh, more about collections. Now, so last time we have done with collection interface, then we have used list interface with integer values, then we have used generics. Now in this, what we'll do is, now if you remember this example, we, we took some random numbers, approximately 100 random numbers, and then we have added all those random numbers which should be less than 1000 into my collection, and then I have sorted those values and printed all these values, right? If I run this now, again you will see we'll be getting all the outputs in a sorted order. So you can see all these values are sorted in ascending order. Now what I want, I want to print uh, all these values in, it's not ascending order, depend up, it should, it should sort depend upon the last value, which means if your value is 1, it should come first. If your value is 5, it should come in middle. If your value is 9, uh, example, if you have this value, let's say this one. So it should come uh, last. Doesn't matter, number is 450, 459. What matters is, is this 9. That means I want to sort it, sort it in my own way. To use that technique, what we can do is we can use a, we can use some uh, like example. If I use a sort method here, it it, it has uh, two signatures. This overloaded function. First is sort with list. That's what we are using now. Next, next is sort list. Now it is comparator. Comparator says you can have your own logic here. That means by default, this sort method, the above one, will sort uh, in ASCII using ASCII values or ascending order. You can see it specifies as ascending order. But I what I want here, I want to sort it in my own way. Okay, so we can use something called as uh, mutually comparing. Okay, so how to do it? First, you have to pass the collection, and next here you have to pass the object of comparator, or you have to pass the instance of a comparator. Now, question is, what is comparator? So, comparator in Java is a interface. So you can see we have a comparator interface belongs to our package util. Then, uh, let's get object of comparator here. Let's see if it is uh, num compare now now since it's an interface if you go to this class it's an it's a functional interface which means it has only one method and it's an interface which works with generics it takes a type t and then it it has a function or a method called as compare taking two values t1 uh, t and uh, o1 and o2 now now what we can do is, we cannot create instance of uh, comparator, right? So we have to create a class. That class will extends, uh, sorry, not extend. Let's create a class name as uh, number compare, num compare. And this should implement, this should implement an interface called as comparator, okay? And in this, since we are implementing a comparator interface, which should compare integers since it works with generics. Now, uh, whenever you implement an interface, you have to define a method which is there in this. Uh, so we, uh, the method name is public int compare, which will take two values. One will be integer, let's say, i1 and integer i2, okay? Now, how to compare these two things? We have to say return, or we can use if else also. We can say, let's say, uh, let's say we will say uh, difference. So, what we can do, we can just, uh, we can sort it in this way. If we can check if, let's say by default, the value for difference is zero. Or we can check in this way. If i1 uh, mod because we have we want only last value right if i1 mod is greater than i2 mod 10 it will pick up the last value if this is the scenario the difference should be minus 1 or difference should be 1 else if if your i1 mod 10 is less than i2 it's i2 mod 10 then it, the dif difference value should be minus one because while sorting this compare method or this sort method will check for the positive values and negative values. 
else you can specify diff is equal to zero. Okay, even you don't have to specify this also because if this two don't execute, we have a different by default which is zero, right? And then we can say return diff. Simple. And then here, what we can do is we can say new num com because we have a class now which implements comparator and then we can pass here something called as new com simple right so this is how we have to use comparator and if i run this you will see the output is we have all these numbers and they are sorted with their uh, last value so you can see it is 0 0 0 0 then 1 1 1 then all twos then 3 then 4 then 5 then 6 then 7 right so it is work it's working now if you see here we are doing this if else uh, part now you can do the same thing with something called as ternary operator now how to use ternary operator we can simply say it is diff is equal to if my i1 um, let me use the easy code so it is diff equal to i1 mod i2 if this is the scenario then question mark it should be one otherwise colon otherwise colon and then we we'll use this condition if this is also if this works it should be minus one right now we're seeing something here it's colon question mark colon okay and then we have to say else it should be zero so we can directly define int diff so it is same like uh, if else if and else now if, if you want to define it this way you can also remove this variable diff so you can directly say return this value okay so this is how you can reduce the number of lines in your code and we have two semicolons okay Simple, right? If I run this code now, it will still work. It will work. Okay. Now, so this is how you have to use comparator. Now, if you see, the only reason why we are creating this class here is just to implement comparator. Right? So, what we can do is, we can simply, instead of using this num comp, we can simply create object of uh, comparator using a uh, inner, inner class so we can create object of uh, we can we cannot create a uh, the instance of interface directly we have to use something called as inner class so after this constructor of uh, comparator we have to give a curly brace open and close to define the implementation in this implementation we can use this method so we can say cut and paste so we don't require this class here right Simple. Is it? Am I missing something here? It's giving me an error. I'm using compare. All right. Now, whenever you use this type of integer, the problem is when you say comparator and when you say compare. So it should match a signature. By default, the signature here of this comparator or this type of this comparator is by default object, which means this should also be an object. This should also be an object, right? But we want to compare int of integers, right? So that's why we have to mention this should be an this should be an integer. Now it will work. And here also we should mention it, it should be integer. Okay. So now if I run this, it's working. That means we can reduce the number of lines with the help of inner class. Now if you observe, the only reason why we are creating this uh, numcom is to pass here, right? That means we are using that reference only one. So if in this scenario, we can just copy this code. Since we are using it only, only once, we can paste it here. This is called as anonymous inner class because this inner class here doesn't have a name. So this is anonymous in a class, right? So you can reduce the number of lines again. Now what next? Now if we talk about this part, if we can focus, uh, this 
comparator here, it's a, it's, it's a functional interface. And Java 8 says whenever you have a anonymous inner class of a functional interface, you can use lambda expression. What it means, this boilerplate code from here to here, we don't require this code. It's because by default, collection will ask, obviously it's asking for a comparator object, so why we have to pass this? And obviously in comparator interface, we have only one method which is compare. So why to mention? Java, now J JVM is smart enough to guess this value and this value. So we can remove this part. We can directly mention we want two variables and in this, uh, we, we, we want two objects and in this uh, method, so this is the signature of your compare. In this method, we require this, this definition. Okay. So you can, okay. And we can simply write this case, right? So we have reduced the number of lines. Again, what we know, what we know is this collection, this collection is a, this C is a part of, it's a type of integer. So why we have to mention integer here? Again, your JVM, JVM is smart enough to guess the type of the value, right? And you can write this, this thing. That's it. So this is how your uh, comparator works. So you can see we have reduced the number of lines. In fact, lots of lines. And that's the advantage of Java 8. So this is comparator. In next part, we'll talk about comparable. Thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for further videos.